Good morning, boys. Today we shall read the poem Sea Fever. We have discussed already about the poet and the title of the poem and also about the poem. Today it's time for us to start reading it. Listen to me very minutely because this is a uh, this is a very important poem, important for your exam too and for your uh, appreciation of poetry. Let's start. I must go down to the seas again. I have told you earlier that each of the stanzas begins with this clause. I must go down to the seas again. I am determined to go to the seas again without the thought whether I would come back or not. I am absolutely determined to go there because, because uh, I have to, I have to connect myself to that infinity, with that infinity. I must go down to the seas again. That means he must go on a voyage. Samudra Jabo means to Samudra Gya Hatu Jala Nami Dari Thakar Nohe. It's not so. Samudra Jabo means Ami Ekta Samudra Jatra Korbo Jahajit Kore. I must go to a voyage. Kidokam Samudra Jabo? What kind of sea does the poet like? To the lonely sea and the sky. Just try to understand. What I told you earlier. Here he wants the sea which is lonely. That means, that means he is uh, not quite uh, ambitious of getting a very pleasant sea. He wants, he knows that the sea might be melancholic, the sea might be perilous. The sea might be devoid of all companions. Still, he is desirous to go there. That is why, to the lonely sea, the word lonely is very important here because uh, uh, the, the word lonely here reflects the poet's intention, the poet's taste. He is not romantic about the sea. He is not optimistic about the sea. He would like to take the sea as it is. The voyage is the voyage across the sea is always perilous, dangerous. There must be a number of perils in the sea voyage. Still, he wants to uh, undergo it. That is the beauty. That is the beauty. He admits everything. Still he wants. And the sky. I want to go to the sea and also to the sky. The infinity, the sense of infinity is still there. The sea also represents the infinity and the sky too. The sky, the sea, somewhere meets and that is called horizon which is also infinity that denotes infinity ami digonte pouchobo jekhane sky giye sea er shonge misheche seta kothay shekhane kono din pouchano jay so seta ekta antohin journey ami jabo kintu kothay jabo kobe phirbo kothay giye pouchobo ami jante chai na so, AJ, the attempt to connect with the infinity, that is the spirit of the poem. And the spirit, very spirit, is uh, conveyed, is revealed in the very first line of the poem. And all I ask is a tall ship. Just try to understand the phrase tall ship. And all I ask is a tall ship. I must undergo the voyage. I have to go on a voyage. And for this, for this voyage, what I need is a tall ship. 
what i need is a tall ship but but the poet asks for a tall ship what he needs is a tall ship to go to the sea but now question is what a tall ship is we know tall means something tall that is lomba amra dirgho jake boli ekon prashno holo jahaj ki dirgho hoy ei rokom bhabe opor dike birat lomba jahaj erom hoy na then what does it mean you know in this poem though it is written in simple language there are some connotations there are some symbolic words here the word lonely i have discussed earlier lonely it is the connotations of gray melancholy uh, sea it denotes the sea in a melancholy manner and here also the word tall the adjective tall is placed before the ship to give up different meaning what the meaning is here tall ship denotes the ships known for its uh, for its sea worthiness the ship that is known for its ship a uh, sea worthiness it is fit for a perfect a long journey a perfect and long voyage so it must be sturdy it must be fitted with oaken masts tall masts mast means mastul boro boro oak kaathe toiri mastul thakbe and a variety of sails would also be there to catch the optimum wind so here tall ship does not only mean tall lomba it means something else here tall ship means a ship very sturdy with long uh, uh, oak oakened made of oak wood uh, masts and a variety of sails which is very worthy which is very fit for a long voyage across the sea do you understand my boys tall ship denotes something different here so for my voyage the poet wants to say here that for his voyage he wants a very sturdy well built ship and a stir and a stir to steer her by and a stir to steer her by and he also wants a stir a stir mind it a stir uh here a star means the star that can navigate one a ship or something that is the pole star we know that the pole star helps us in navigation isn't it so here a star denotes the pole star shubhatara and the star to steer her by for the navigation of the ship for the proper navigation of the ship the poet wants a star that is the pole star here another word to notice that is har just try to understand the word har har here refers to the ship because and a star to steer har by that means the to steer the ship by for the ship here the poet uses the word har so this must be an example of personification do you know what personification is when human qualities are attributed to some inanimate objects or some animals this is called personification banglay bole shoma shakti to ekhane har kotha ta bola hoyeche jahaj ta sambandhe সুতরাং এখানে জাহাজটাকে পার্সোনিফাই করা হয়েছে দ্য শিপ হ্যাজ বিন পার্সোনিফাইড হিয়ার বাই দ্য ওয়ার্ড হার হোয়েন হোয়েন এভার ইউ আর গোয়িং থ্রু আ পোয়েম ইউ হ্যাভ টু থিঙ্ক ভেরি ক্লিয়ারলি বিকজ মাই বয়েজ পোয়েট্রি ইজ সামথিং আ মিডিয়াম অফ আর্ট দ্যাট টেলস মেনি থিংস উইদ ইন আ ভেরি শর্ট স্প্যান দ্য পোয়েট ডাজ নট ইউজ much words like the prose writers the novelists the short story writers the poet does not uh, use so many words but through a scanty of words 
he tells us much things that is why you have to understand the style of a poet you have to understand every word written in a poem poem otherwise you cannot fully understand the poet's intention you can never understand a poem fully so the poem wants to go on a voyage to a very lonely a very grey melancholic um, sea and also to the sky that is he wants to be close with the infinity and for this voyage the poet wants a very sturdy well built ship with various sails and long masts and at the same time he wants the help of the polster to navigate his ship that is the uh, explanation of the first two lines of the first rhymed couplet of the first quatrain and the whales kick and the winds um, oh there is another thing a star to steer just look at it star to steer this is called alliteration you will find the examples of alliteration again in this poem so this is an alliteration start to steer what is alliteration alliteration is the repetition of a single sound in a phrase okay a repetition of a single sound in a phrase and this repetition makes a very pleasant sound effect in our ears and that is why it's a very a popular rhetoric uh, to the poets bangla alliteration ke bole onuprash onuprash tora shune thakbi hoyto jemon dhor guru guru me gumori gumori goroje gogone gogone goroje gogone kimba cholo chopolar chokito chomoke koriche choron bicharon kotha chompako abhoron ए सब ही हे अनुप्रास उदाहरण तो जो पशापाशी दुई बा तधिक वार्डे वार्ड एक ही धरण ध्वनि दिए शुरू है तरह मध्य बार बार एक ध्वनि फिर फिर आसे से मिले मिसे एक साउंड इफेक्ट तैरि एक ध्वनि व्यंजना तैरिंग एके बोले अनुप्रास इंगरेजी बोले एलिटारेशन सो एलिटारेशन इज अ प्लेजेंट रेटरिक इट इट क्रिएट्स अ भेरि प्लेजेंट साउंड इफेक्ट to the readers and this is an example of alliteration to st star to steer do you understand what alliteration is what ails does the poet want and the whales kick and the winds sun and the white sails shaking what else the poet wants are the wheels kick the wheel of the ship turning uh, smoothly and the wind song the wind the sound of the uh, marine wind and the white sails shaking and also the shaking the trembling of the sails and the sails are white in color सेल मीस पाल जाके बोली पाल आगे का दिन नौको पाल थकत तो से पाल तोला नौकर से पाल सदा रंग पालगुल चाहिए सेगल जान नड़े हेन डू दिल्स शेक हेन द उड इज भेरि फेभरेबल दुईड इज एबसल्यूटलि ओके दें दुईड शेक इन अ परफेक्ट मैनर एंड Uh, when the sails are shaking perfectly the journey must be very smooth and that is why the poet wants the wheels kick the wind song that is a favorable wind and also the shaking of the white sails here also my boys you will find two alliterations wind song here there is an alliteration and the white sails shaking that is sails sails shaking it is also an example of alliteration the poet wants 
all things all these things for his voyage and the gray mist on the sea's face and he wants something more he wants a mist do you know what mist is mist is something like fog but it is not absolutely similar to fog we know fog we have seen fog you have also seen fog um, but mist is something different it is uh, usually found on the seas and also in the mountain region uh, that is the dense form of moisture that is called mist and the poet wants gray mist on the sea's face he wants the sea covered with gray mist in the morning at dawn here also an example of personification sea's face sea's face samudrer mukh when he talks about the face of the sea he must personify the uh, the ocean the sea so it is also an example of personification and a great dawn breaking and he wants a dawn a daybreak the daybreak he does not want very sunny daybreak he knows that sunny daybreak is not quite possible on the seas because there must be sea in the morning at dawn so he wants a daybreak which is gray in color but it is a daybreak because daybreak means the beginning of another voyage so he always wants to carry on his journey and that is why he always wants a daybreak whether it is gray whether it is shiny or not he doesn't care he just wants a daybreak a dawn because dawn means the beginning of a new day and the beginning of a new day means the beginning of a journey the continuation of the voyage so he wants an infinite voyage and that is why he wants the daybreak that is the explanation of the first quatrain the first stanza so in the first stanza we find what we find we find the desire of the poet to connect with the sea uh, through uh, that is shown through the pursuit of a sailor's life as the poet asks for a ship to sail but he does not describe the sea in the most classically beautiful terms here she is gray the sea is gray and lonely giving more mysterious and melancholy connotations yet enchanting nonetheless and for his infinite journey he wants a number of things but those things are not for luxury those are necessary for a voyage okay then uh, by today and the next day we shall go through the remaining part of the poem